Well, hi everybody and welcome to the Eco Investment Update for February 8th, 2015. Okay, I used to be a banker, a private banker, okay, big commercial bank currency trader, but it doesn't mean that this is my uh, jailbird uniform, okay? Not every banker went to jail, not every banker was bad, okay? <laughs> I personally uh, gave it to some people on some deals, but uh, they were people that could afford it. it uh, banks that just weren't didn't have the survival of the fittest uh, instinct. Anyway, guys, it's time for the uh, bi-weekly eco-investment update. And you know, the last two weeks since our last chat have been wild and woolly. We had that, uh, that unprecedented collapse in oil prices down to $43 a barrel and yes I bought some oil stocks and yes I made some money on the uh, bounce yes the bounce is going to go higher we're at 50, uh, 51 52 dollars a barrel there'll be people coming out saying oh here they go again all the uh, all the big cats are starting to manipulate the oil market and here we go on the upside again let me tell you, there will be no quick cures for this collapse in oil. Sure, we might have a rally up to about the $70 a barrel or thereabouts or retrace about half of what we dropped on the uh, on the calamitous decline, but it will be no different than the stock market crash of 29. It will be no different than the gold collapse of 1980. It will be no different than the real estate collapse of uh, 19, uh, the, the uh, early to mid 2000s, and it will be no different than the, uh, you know, the scary, almost depressionary collapse that we went through in uh, 2008. Yes, there'll be a recovery, uh, but it will be short-lived, and we will be on the downside again, trending lower. Only this time we won't have a lot of the drama. We'll just have a slow peeling off of uh, values. How low could it go? I don't know, $20, $25 a barrel. The, you know, when OPEC used to have control of the uh, oil market and there weren't a lot of alternative producers and the U.S. dried up and uh, Canada was beckoning, well, you know what happened? They took the uh, price of oil sky high and as a result, the solar power industry was born, you know, the uh, alternative uh, fuels came about, the uh, whole start of the fracking thing to the point where now the U.S. is the largest producer in the world of crude oil. So what goes around comes around and now instead of the oil market being in control of a few hands, it's in the control of many, many, many hands worldwide and it's so big now that uh, the OPEC has lost control. Now you might say to yourself, oh, they could just shut the uh, spigots off. Well, they could blow their brains out tomorrow too, but the bottom line is it's not in their self-interest just to stop, okay? They have too much pressures on budgetary-wise and other things. They've built their kingdoms, their uh, whole operations on $90 a barrel oil, and here we sit at $52 a barrel. It is catastrophic. Now, on to the uh, stock market. Of course, we had the news about the unemployment rate ticked up slightly, but job creation was strong. But, of course, we know it was in the MIC jobs, the low-end, uh, the low-wage things characterizing our economy over the last two years. And anybody with half a brain can see through the government flim-flam of job creation and uh, ballyhoo for what it is. Okay, the bottom line is that we're basically gutting the middle class in America. And I'm afraid we're almost reaching a point in the stock market where to people it looked like the last good value proposition that they could put some money in and get the, you know, a 3% yield on uh, Pepsi-Cola, of 5% uh, yield on PG&E. In other words, in the, in the days of grandma getting one half of one percent interest on a two-year deposit at the bank they don't want your money remember i mean five percent look pretty luscious so we've had this real fight for yield okay but some other bad things are happening in the economy we have currencies under pressure the russia russian ruble is undergirded by energy okay and with the game that Putin's been playing in international brinksmanship, he's got too much macho to just say, hey, I screwed up, I made a mistake, he won't step back from the brink, he will take them on a full-on nosedive right into the ground, and misery will befall the Russian economy, okay, once again. 
But, you know, the collapse of oil prices, because it was very widespread, the growth of the industry is built on that, and the industry itself, the energy business, it also contributes to the deflationary forces that are lurking in the economy. When you build your empire, when you build your government, when you build your whole budgetary structure on $90 a barrel oil, and now you're at $45, $50, $55 a barrel oil, you know what? You don't continue spending the way you did before, okay? You start cutting, all right? And you start cutting in a lot of places, and you start cutting vigorously. So the drop in oil is a double-edged sword. Of course, it helps the airlines. It helps consumers, but at the same time, it drops a hammer on North Dakota and up in the uh, Marcellus Shale regions. It drops a hammer down in uh, Texas, Louisiana, and the Gulf area and all that. So, you know, it's, it's a half, half a dozen, on, you know, half dozen on one and six on the other. It's kind of a even Steven, but I'm afraid it may be more of a uh, depressant than a, a stimulant in the uh, long run because it contributes to too much debt in the world too much uh, debt built on ninety dollar now uh, barrel oil uh, contributing to all the other debt that's starting to go bad around the world you know europe is turning into a, a dire sort of basket case and if it wasn't for uh, germany holding the eu together i mean who knows would, would uh, befall over there. So consequently, we had that big drop in the market. We were about 17,800. And man, we dropped down to 17,200. It was like an air pocket. Boom. Well, it was pretty scary because oil was collapsing and the oil stocks were driving that loss. But now we've rallied up to almost, almost a new all-time high. And I'm at the point now where, you know, my thesis is still intact about low interest rates, but I have the yellow flags out once again because I don't want to lose all the big profits that I've accumulated over the last year and a half from the, uh, from the 14,000 level on the Dow up to uh, almost uh, 18,000 today. So I've decided this week I'm going to pare back my positions. I'm going to keep a good chunk of money still in the market but I've decided to cut my positions in half just to sort of make sure I lock in some profit. And if the market ends up dipping below 17,200, which it could very well do because uh, you look at the results from companies like IBM and, and uh, companies like that, they're not, uh, they're not growing the company, they're shrinking and they're just cutting, cutting, cutting. Well, that's no way to build a successful economy and that's mirrored all over the place so be cautious okay I'm getting half that now and if we drop below 17,200 on the Dow I'm taking the uh, I'm taking the whole fish cake out of the market right there okay thanks for watching the uh, update jailbird Rosie happy Valentine's Day next week and I will see you in two weeks and as the Chinese say you may you live in interesting times well, we sure as hell do, guys. Thanks so much for watching.